Hello, welcome to the Paper Turtle. This is Mary, and this is uh, video number two in making these cloth covered junk journals. And today we're going to decorate the covers a little bit and we're going to make the signatures. I don't know how far we'll get in that. I don't, I'm not sure if we'll get to actually sewing them in or maybe I'll sew one in. We'll see. Um, but I have this one see this one and this one and where we left off I had gone to we covered the journal with fabric and I had gone to sew around the um, edges well that really didn't work out too well for me <laughs> I've only sewn one other batch of journals before and they came out okay I'm not big on sewing I went to do this and my sewing machine didn't work right and I got very very frustrated I actually ended up in tears over this um, eventually my husband came back from his walk and he looked at the sewing machine and he got it working again for me so I was able to get them done but I I think I'm just not gonna be sewing on my journals it just I'm it, I, I, it's not something I'm good at I don't have the patience to use that sewing machine um, and it's not the machine. It's me. It's just me. So I'm not crazy about how these came out, but hopefully with some embellishment and some playing around with them, I can get them to look a little bit better. Um, but what I did was I added some lace to the front and the back of the edge. And I also put some pockets in the middle. And, um, then I just sewed around the edges and, you know, it's it's okay now after I did these I was looking on um, Facebook and somebody had said when they do a straight stitch like this they do two of them kind of wonky so that it looks intentionally wonky that's what I wish I had thought of I wish I had done that but honestly I don't feel like going back pulling out that sewing machine again and fighting with it again to do this again um, so I'm leaving it I, and it's just, it is what it is so that's the pink one this is the blue one pockets on the inside and the lace on the front and the back and this is the green one so that's where we're at so now I want to put a little bit more um, embellishment on the front and what I picked out for this one is this little label and these buttons it was kind of fun going through my buttons trying to uh, find just the right buttons for these things and I also would like to I think add some thread to them I just have to find the right thread and I'm sure that I've got something in here that will work this is my junk jar not junk jar my snippet jar any little tiny pieces of things that I use I put in here and if I need a tiny little piece of something I pull it out and eventually I'm gonna make a snippet roll out of these things because um, that's really what I'm saving them for and I haven't done that yet and I think that'll be kind of a fun thing to do so I'm just going to put this little, <clears throat> these little pieces of thread into my buttons to make a little, just to put a little bit of interest in them. And all I do is just go, if I can see it, down and up. And... Um, <clears throat> Do you ever wonder how I have the patience to do any kind of craft? <laughs> I really don't. I, I'm a very impatient, instant gratification kind of person. And I don't, uh, that's why I don't like, I don't know, any kind of craft that takes multiple steps that I can't finish in one sitting or finish part of it, see some progress in one sitting, I just, I, I can't do it. Knitting, nope. I'm trying to crochet though. I've started um, teaching myself 
from YouTube videos how to crochet. And I'm waiting for some more yarn to come in. I ordered some more. I had just ordered a couple of skeins just to play and see if it was going to be something that I like. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> Not real great at that either, but it's it's kind of fun and we'll see. It, it, it takes some time to get the real feel of the, the crocheting um, to kind of um, get the tension on it right. I know my tension is way too tight on what I'm working on, but um, I haven't quite got the, the feel of being just loose yet on the, on it. So it's, it's a, a work in progress, but huh, it's something to do while I'm sitting there watching TV. Um, besides fussy cutting, I get kind of bored with the fussy cutting and need something different. Ouch. I just stabbed myself. These little scissors that I have, they're super, super sharp because they were getting rather dull. So I asked my husband one day if he could sharpen them for me. He's a knife guy. So he sharpened them and oh my gosh, he sharpened them to such a point. I don't know if you can, if you can see that point on there or not, but it is like super sharp and I keep stabbing myself with them. I don't know if I need to like go like this on something to, to dull that tip down, but it's, it, it hurts when I poke myself. Um, I have, I don't have a whole lot of these labels. I probably need to go find some printable labels out there somewhere. Um, these are just things that I've picked up from die cuts out of scrapbook kits or stickers or whatever. And I don't have a lot of them I'm kind of running out of them, but, um, I, I have a few. I'm just ready for a variety. <clears throat> so I picked out the papers for the, um, Oh my God, the signatures. <laughs> and I, so I have them ready to go and I'll, I'll show you what I picked out. And, um, I, I hope I have picked out enough. If not, I'll, I can find some more to throw in there with them. And then after that, we'll get to, um, we will get to decorating the, inside <clears throat> now to glue my to, to attach my buttons I've been using these and I hope that they're gonna hold them this is a pretty strong adhesive but I'm just afraid over time it may not hold up I don't know I'm gonna put two of these on here because it's a bigger button Because regular glue, of course, doesn't hold these on. You have to have something a little bit stronger. And see, it's it's pretty it's pretty well on there. They're they're really strong. I just don't know. I I, I hope they don't dry up or anything like that. I've used these in my scrapbooks many many times, and I don't recall any of them drying up but you don't know because it, it really needs the test of time all right so that's that one I hope I geez I hope you can see me I I'm this camera setup is it's okay but um I wish I had something that I could actually see what you're seeing and I can't because it, it, it's the way that it's set up is the, um, the screen is up on the holder. So I can't really see what's on the screen. Okay. There's that one. 
this one. What was I going to do on this one? I think this one was going to be the butterfly. This is going to be this and these buttons. Okay, this is this goes on this one. And I wanted to put a butterfly on because I have this butterfly. But I'm not sure what butterfly to use. These I think are kind of too dark. Let me see if there's one in here that'll work. I have this kind of pinkish color in here I'm hoping to pick up on, but no, this isn't going to work because it's more peachy. That's really not a good, good color there. I have this. I don't know. This one's got a little less... That's not too bad. I'm not sure if I really love the look of the butterfly. The sh like the shape of it or something. Something's not hitting me right with this. So let me try. I have this. This has a blue one. No. That's too... Um, like new looking. Too clean or something I don't know it doesn't it doesn't that's not working for me and then I have these metallic looking ones <clears throat> that came from the dollar store the only thing I don't like about them is they have this little hole in the top some of them not all of them some of them do that one is kind of pretty but do I want that metallic on there? It, I, I almost feel like if I have this metallic here, then I need some metallic somewhere else. If I put one there and one there, would that be too many? I think so. Um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll go with that one. It's a little bit different. I'm going to do it. I'll just do it. All right, sometimes you just got to say, yep, that's it. That's what I'm doing. <clears throat> so when I filmed the first video where we put these, the fabric on the covers, I had mentioned that I was going to um, give one of these away as a, as a giveaway when I reached 300 subscribers. That was a couple days ago, and yesterday I hit 300 subscribers. I'm like so in awe. I'm so shocked and so surprised because, I, honestly, I, I never even thought that I would get 300 subscribers. I thought that I would get um, 25, you know, people that I know or friends, relatives, you know, the, you know, the, the obligatory subscribers, but I have 300 subscribers and, and that's just, I don't know. That's so cool. <laughs> that's just really cool. So I just want to thank you all so much. Um, and I hope that the, that you like the new content as well as the haul videos, because that's what I, I don't have much choice right now. Um, so as soon as these are done, I'll I'll do a giveaway, and that'll be fun. All right, I think I think that'll work. What do you think? Remember, these are gonna have ties on them too when when they're all done. I, it's okay, I guess. I'm not crazy about it. Not crazy. But sometimes when you do something, you walk away, you come back and look at it later, you like it more. <clears throat> and I think that's going to be the case here, <clears throat> is that I'm going to like it more later. <laughs> All right, this one. Now, this one I really like. Um, 
at first I wasn't too sure about the colors on this cover but the more that I work with it the more that I like it so um, I think this this one might turn out to be my favorite of the three I'm not sure and you know as we go along with this project let me know in the comments which one um, you like the best and maybe I will um, determine which one I'm going to give away by um, which one you tell me everybody tells me they like the best this has a wire in in it so I'm trying to get the wire out oops and I just flung it across my desk somewhere and then this one has some old thread in it, which I'm tempted to keep, but it's dirty looking, so I'm not going to keep it. We will get it out of there. I'll put fresh thread in there. So yeah, let me know, and it doesn't have to be in this particular um, video, maybe one of the, the next ones as we get more into it and get more done. Um, you can let me know which one you like the best and then I will um, decide which one I'm going to offer up for the giveaway. I'm really excited about that because um, I was going to way back when I first started I was going to do a giveaway when I hit a hundred but it came up on me so fast and I felt like well I'm not really sure what I would give away um, so I didn't I didn't actually do it but now I feel like, wow, 300, that's, that's really good. I mean, I know it's not thousands like some people have, but for someone who never intended to have very many, it's pretty good, I think. All right, so I think I'm going to put in a, like a, I have this off-white thread. Oh, that's a little one. I have a bigger one here. They're all little ones. What the heck? That's all right. I only need, I only need a little bit. Hopefully, it's enough for me to get my fat fingers through. <clears throat> I know that's gross. I licked it, but <laughs> I have to, to get it skinny enough. I'll disinfect it before I send it out. Oh my gosh, that one's all frayed. Let me try this end. I think these are too thick. Okay, I know this is tedious for you to watch. I'm sorry. Well, I got one of the threads through, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to strip it of the threads. And I put it through the wrong side. <laughs> Watch Mary's comedy show here. I really don't think my fingers are that fat, but boy, when I try to do something like this, they feel like they are huge. Just because they they don't cooperate. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I hope this is relaxing for you to watch. <laughs> It's splitting again. It's only one thread. How's it splitting? Wow. There we go. Oh my goodness. That that was... I got two more buttons to do. <laughs> okay, while I'm fumbling with this, what should we talk about? 
Um, talk about buttons. Yesterday, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. I had one more um, batch of buttons that I had to sort through. It was the the jar and the bag that were in my last haul video. Um, so I, I sat there and I sorted through those buttons and there wasn't a whole lot in there as far as like anything super special, but, um, let me use this, but it was, it, there were some, some interesting buttons in there and I'll show you when I finish this, I'll show you um, some really pretty glass buttons that were in there that I found. And those probably won't be used in a junk journal just because they're more collectible type buttons. I think I've told you before in videos that my mother, who is 82, 82, collects buttons. She's collected them for years and years and years. And before her, my grandmother collected buttons. So she has quite an amount of buttons and, um, she belongs to a button club and they have meetings and they, I don't know, they exchange buttons. And she recently sold a whole bunch of her buttons because she was moving and she didn't have room for all her buttons. So she sold a bunch of them. I don't know if she regrets it now or not, but she, um, she has a ton of buttons. So every time that I go through, every time that I get buttons, I go through them and I pick things out that I think she would like, or I just take the whole thing to her and I let her go through them first and pick out what she wants. And then I just, I take the rest because I don't, I'm not collecting them. Um, but I will keep some out that I feel might be a little bit more collectible or worth something than your average everyday buttons. All right. Well, that took a little bit more time than I anticipated. I probably should have done that beforehand off camera, but I didn't think that it would take that long to do. So, um, this is going on here, I think about there. And then this guy's going to go here with a button in the middle. And then these guys are going to go up there like that. How's that look? I like it. And my cat just opened my door and came in. I don't think she'll jump up on here. Sometimes she does. But um, usually if it's full of stuff, she doesn't. If if I've got it nicely cleaned off and there's space for her, she'll get up and lay down right here in the middle of my stuff. <clears throat> but she's usually pretty good about staying off. I think I've kicked her off enough times that she she knows not to come up here depends on how much attention she wants so let's see I think this is pretty self-explanatory I don't think I need to explain step by step what I'm doing. Um, if you have any questions about anything, certainly throw a question in the comments. Um, <clears throat> These things, when you use these, the the little glue dots are stuck onto the paper, and you press your item onto the dot and lift it up, and the dot comes up with your item. In theory, it's supposed to. And then you just stick it down. 
Now, if you touch these things, <laughs> not only are your hands going to get really sticky, but it's going to, you're going to lose the stickiness of the dot a little bit and they won't be as effective. So you have to just kind of be careful not to touch them with your fingers. This one I think is a little glass button. It feels like it's glass. Okay. So that's that one. Now, let me show you the buttons I was talking about that I found. I think I have them right here. Yeah. These are some that I've pulled out to take to my mother. But this one, these ones are... I'm still debating whether to actually give these to her or keep them for myself. I don't know. I really like them, but like I said, I'm not a collector, so I'm not sure what I would do with them. Okay. They're, they're glass. And they've got this gold trim on them aren't they pretty I thought that they were so pretty um and I'm not really sure 50s or 60s maybe there it does say something on the inside but I can't I can't read it I think that my husband said that it said um costume maker or something like that so I don't know I have to check with my mother see if that's like a certain brand that she knows of or but they're so pretty and you can hear how they they clink together that that kind of lets you know that they're glass they're not they're not plastic okay so next the next step is going to be um putting the signatures together now i have already gone through and i've picked out a pile of paper Um, to make these signatures with and I'm just trying to gather it here got it right here and first thing that I want to do everybody does their stuff different um, and so the way that I am going to do this is just the way that I do it it's not the way it has to be done. It's not the way you have to do it. If you see a way that works better for you, by all means, do your thing. Um, what am I looking for? Oh, okay. So first I need to determine, and I have to write it down because I will forget if I don't write it down, the size of my paper. So I want to leave a little bit of room. Do it this way. Um, I think I want it to go no longer than, you know, about here. So I'm going to say about four. It could be, I don't know if I quite want to go four and a quarter. I'm going to go four. So each page is going to be four inches wide. But the paper can be up to eight inches wide because, you know, four for each half, you can double it. And then the height, I'm going to say no taller than eight inches. So my papers will be eight by eight. Um, that's an H, by the way, for high. <laughs> high and wide. Um... So I'm going to I'm going to cut one and I'm going to put it in and see make sure that that's the size that I want. And those are patterns, so I don't want to cut those yet. Here I'll cut one of these. <clears throat> I've picked out paper for each um each book. And Hopefully, I can get all three of these done. 
eight. By eight. Since the height and width are the same, um, it doesn't matter which way. I fold it unless it's got a pattern on it. So I'm going to score it at four and I'm going to fold it <clears throat> and I'm just going to set it inside one of the journals to see if it's the right size. And it is, I could probably go another quarter of an inch wide, maybe. Let's see where that would land us. Um, half a quarter, yeah. I could probably go another quarter of an inch wide. So I'm going to do that. So it'll be four and a quarter and eight and a half. All right. So let me try that on this one. I'm going to go eight. Wait, is this, how big is this? This is eight and a half. Okay, so I just need to cut it eight. And score at four and a quarter right am I thinking this through correctly I think so where's my score tool oh boy all right four and a quarter matters which book these go in They're all the same yeah that's a little better okay and it's okay that that one's a little short it doesn't matter all right well I know this is eight and a half right yeah so this just needs to be eight And then I'm going to score this at four and a quarter. So these are going to be my, my guidelines. I don't want anything any bigger than these. I think I'm going to... Um, I'm probably going to end up finding another piece. Here, I'll use this one. <laughs> These are great because they are eight and a half inches wide, so you don't even have to cut those, except for the this way. So eight and four and a quarter. So, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to show you the different papers that I got for the different books. This one here is, these are some eight and a half by 11, I just dropped my score tool, eight and a half by 11, um, kind of cardstock, I guess they are, um, and I just picked a different color for each book. Now, you don't have to score all your paper. I'm just scoring the heavier cardstock pieces because um, they just fold easier. The lighter pieces just fold in half, but it's not. Uh, 
not necessary to score them all. It does take a little bit more time to do. But all right, so I have those. Um, then I have, let's see, what else do I have here? These are the same size paper. This is um, resume paper, I believe is how it was. And that is eight and a half wide. Um, how it was, uh, oh man. what it's called, how it's labeled. It's a little thinner than the cardstock. I just have to think for a second after I cut it which way I'm supposed to be folding it. <laughs> I'll probably fold some the wrong way and then they'll they'll end up all wonky in my book. and. It happens all the time. <laughs> I, I don't, uh, sometimes I just don't pay attention to what I'm doing. All right, so that's those. I have these that I think they need to be cut down. These are just pages from a journal. And I'm just gonna cut down to four and a quarter. They're a little too wide. And I think they're, let's see, are they eight? Yeah, they might need to be, I might need to cut them down just a titch here. Just a little tiny bit. I'll try to do these two at the same time. Then well, there they're still attached. I have to be careful not to I took these out of a journal. I just um undid the center stitching and pulled the pages out. You have to be careful because sometimes they're kind of stuck together. <clears throat> I have this coffee dyed grid paper, which is also eight and a half by 11. So I just have to cut it down to eight. And fold it that way. I love the crinkliness of it. This, um, I don't, I, I attempted to dye paper one time and I did not like the results. It didn't come out well. See, that instant gratification person? <laughs> I get frustrated when things don't work right. So I, I've only done it once. And then um, I did a swap with some people in a Facebook group, and they sent me some dyed paper, and I sent them some other, other goodies. I hope that they liked what I sent them. I don't know. We'll see if they ever want to swap again when I run out of paper. Um, but they sent some really fun dyed paper. Uh, the grid paper was one. This is another one that they sent with um, some doilies on it. I like that. It's really pretty. Also on 8.5 by 11 paper. So I only have to cut off the ends. Fold it. That's the one thing about using this, making this size journal. Um, you can use these eight and a half by eleven pieces of paper, and they work out perfectly. Now you could, I suppose, make a journal this a little bit wider, like folding, so that it's uh, this big. Then you can use eight and a half by eleven paper that you don't have to cut down um, if you really don't want that 
I don't know, waste. I don't think it's waste because I will use those. And I'll show you later on how I'm going to use some of those papers um, to make some mini journals to put in the journal. Um, and then I have these are from an aviator log book and I think that they are yep they're smaller than the size we need no they're a little bit wider all right I'm gonna cut them down um, oh, they're just a tiny bit wider yeah I'm gonna cut them anyway because I don't I don't really want things to stick out too much um, I don't know. It's kind of a weird, weird thing I have with the, the journal. I like my ends to be no longer than where they're supposed to be, if that makes any sense. I'll, I'll add some lace to some of them so that the lace sticks out. And I like the lace sticking out, but I don't want the paper sticking out. Then I have, these are really fun. These are pages from an SNH green stamp book. And oh, they're really wide. But they've got the stamps on them. I don't know if I really want to cut them off. Maybe I'll fold them. Maybe I'll just fold them in. Let me see, how wide are they? About six, so I would have to fold them. Let's see. One quarter. Fold them about there. I suppose that would be all right. I think. I hate to cut them. I'll just fold them. Okay. See if I can do this like coordinatedly. So that's what about inch and three quarters. See then, like on this page, the stamps will be in. I guess that's all right. I haven't used these in a in a journal yet. be a better way for me to do this. I want it to be, I want it to be, you know, maybe I'm trying to be too exact. That's what's happening here. I'm trying to be too exact with those and they don't need to be because if they're shorter, that's okay too. I suppose. Fold them to that little line right there. Okay. So that's those. I have... Well, let me get the ones that I have to cut out of the way so I can move this cutter. Um, I have these um, graph papers that I really like. And um, the back side of them is plain, which is really cool and really different. All right, let me think. I want them to be eight inches going up that way. So I'm going to do these eight and a qu quarter this way. No, eight and a half. This way. And eight 
this way. Did I do it right? I don't know. Yep. I guess that's right. Now, I know, <clears throat> excuse me. I know that some people, when they do their signatures, they put all their papers together and then cut them. I've even seen them put all their papers together, sew them in, and then cut them. I don't know how they do that. I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, let's see. I have these, which I believe, yep, they're shorter than eight. They're a little wider, so I'm going to have to cut off the end here. I'm killing my blade here, I know. I should have used my guillotine cutter. That would have cut through those better. Okay. Then I have some scrap of paper. That's really super pretty. So, this needs to be eight and a half this way. By eight this way. And it will fold like this. Well, all the birds got cut off. <laughs> That's all right. The flowers are still on there. That's pretty. That bird's on there. And then I have this one. So I want eight and a half this way. I'm just going to cut off part of that bird. I think what I'm going to do is trim a little bit here. So that I'm not totally cutting off, cutting off as little of the birds as I can. And then go eight and a half this way. Still cutting off the bird, but not as much. And then eight this way. You know, it's hard to find um, scrap of paper, double-sided scrap of paper that has like a, an image in the right-hand corner, the bottom right-hand corner, so that it would be here on your paper. <laughs> I have so much scrap of paper and I flip through it all and it's never, the image is always on this side. And so if you use that, that's fine, but then it's, you get over to this page and it's like backwards or something. I don't know. It's weird the way that they do it. So this is going to be eight and a half this way. Like this one. So the image is over here. And so, I don't know. It's just not, it's not right. And then eight this way. And then I have envelopes, and I'll have to show you what I'm going to do with the envelopes. Okay, so we clear the cutter away. Let's get rid of these scraps and stuff. Get them out of our way. Sorry, this video is going to be longer than I intended, so I don't think I'm going to actually sew these things in. I think that I'm going to do that in the next video. Because <clears throat> this one's going to be too long. All right, so we need to put these together and we need one for each journal. So I have to decide which one's gonna be in which journal. I'm gonna keep the, the pattern papers 
Um, I want these to be the outside. So this is the blue journal, this is the green journal, and this is the pink journal. This is going in the pink. This is going in the blue. And this is going in the green, I think. Maybe this will go in the pink. This will go in the green. Yeah, okay. It doesn't... Uh, right now, I'm just going to put these together. doesn't matter what order they're in or anything at this point. We're going to um, switch them around before we sew them in anyway. So we have the cardstock scrap of paper. We have another piece of scrap of paper. We have this ledger paper. I have these doilies, which are so pretty and just the right size. They will go in there. And these are, um, well, they're either lightly dyed <laughs> Or they're just naturally aged. I'm not sure which. I have doilies. I just kind of throw them in a doily container, envelope, bag thing. And then I just go in and I pull out the right size that I need for the right project. And then they're each going to get one of these ledger papers. And again, doesn't matter what order I'm putting these in right now. I will move each of them around before I sew them in. Um, just so that they have a good flow of color and pattern throughout the journal. You don't want all your pattern papers together, all your solid papers together, or anything like that. Um, and I like to have a good sturdy piece in the center of my journal because that's where the stitching is going to come through. See, those need to be folded differently. But I'll take care of that when I'm done with everything. And these are the... This is a pilot's log book. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm not sure where I, I was. I had to pause for a minute. My husband stuck his head in the door. Um, this is a pilot's logbook. It's old. It's kind of cool. I will stick those one in each. And I'm sure that you're really, really bored by now, and I'm so sorry. Here's the dyed paper with the um, <clears throat> the doily on it. So you can see I have a, a variety of types of paper. Um, some of them are coffee dyed, some of them are not, some of them are from old books. Um, there's some scrapbook paper. I really try to make my journals so they can actually be used to journal in. I don't want somebody to look at this and say, well, what do I do with this? What is this for? Because I don't want it to be overly embellished to the point where somebody's looking at it and saying, well, this is pretty. And then they set it aside on the shelf. I want it to be used. I want them to journal in it. I want them to put their mementos or their pictures or whatever it is that they like to save to preserve, I don't know their memories or their thoughts or whatever. Different people use journals for different things. And 
So I want these to be versatile enough that um, they can use them for whatever. And then these. Wait, green. This is the blue book, right? Put in the purple one in the blue book. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> the green one in the green book. And the pink one in the pink book. All right, so this is the size of the signature so far. Um, my doily is going to have to be just right when I set it in there. <clears throat> so they will be fitting into the book like that. And you can see the thickness of them. And I think... I might end up adding a couple more pieces of paper, just maybe one or two. I don't know, maybe not. I do still have the envelopes. Let me add the envelopes and see how that works. Um, so the envelopes, the way that I'm going to use these, these particular envelopes in these journals, I'm just folding them in half, and they're going to go in um, as a signature page like this. Okay, and when you open them up, you have the, um, the flap. Or I might decide to seal the flap and make it a pocket on the top or a pocket on the side. I'm not exactly sure yet, but no matter how I do it, when you use an envelope in your journal, you need to cut your center. Because if you don't, first of all, if, if you don't cut the center, you're not going to be able to lift the flap if you want to. And and even if you, I guess if you wanted to, you have to decide if you want to glue this down, you want to glue your flap down, you have to do it before you um, sew it in. So you kind of have to decide how you're going to use your envelopes before you sew your signatures in. But no matter what, I do like to cut the flaps. So I just cut a teeny, teeny tiny little bit to each side of the fold down to the fold and it doesn't have to be much this is just enough to give it that little bit of leeway in the center there and then cut it out so that now when it's in my signature all right which one is this going to be this is this is going to be the green. Um, this is going to be the... I don't think it matters. This is going to be the pink. So, just to show you. When it's in your signature, you need to be able to lift that flap if you want to. And if you don't want to, if you're going to glue it down, you still need to be able to glue down this edge. Like if I want this to be a pocket at the top, then I'll want to glue this down. Or if I want a pocket on the side, then I need to glue this down. So you have to cut that flat before you put it into your book. Okay. So that is what I'm doing with these. And this one, because this one has this beautiful inside to it that I'm going to leave the flaps. I'm not going to glue them down because if I wanted to glue them down, I'd just use a plain old envelope. So don't forget to do that when you're putting your envelopes into your journals because otherwise um, they're just not going to work right for you. There has to be a little bit of prep work before you sew your signatures in. Let's see. Um, because some things just won't, they won't work right for you if you don't do that, that prep work. And one of them is um, <clears throat> doing the envelopes. 
the other prep work is stamping on your pages. And um, when you, you want to stamp on your pages before you sew your signatures in, because again, um, it's easier to do it on a flat piece of paper rather than on this bulky thing here once it's in your book. Okay, so that's going to be it for today. But what I'm going to do in the next video which is, I'm just going to continue right on here in my filming, is um, we're going to prepare these signatures to be sewn in. Um, to decide if I'm going to do any stamping on them, I'm not sure. Um, and then prepare the signatures to sew them in, and then we'll sew them in, and then we'll be ready to start decorating them. I like them so far. Okay, see you in a little bit. Or see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.